My name is Sheila and I'm the founder of Skilled Hands organization CIC. Skilled Hands started on It was born from a simple yet profound belief that every woman possesses unique skills that needs to be honed and celebrated. The idea for setting up Skilled Hands was to set up a platform where women could meet, have camaraderie and be doing craft um, to unwind from the pressures of life. Um, we, the vision was to create a space where these skills could flourish and where women could be empowered through arts and craft. So in 2005, I came out of the university um, with a first class honors and still didn't get a job. I had done my teaching assistance at the university, my college for a year. And the idea was to carry on and do my master's as well. I was made an offer on scholarship to further my education to become a junior lecturer, but I declined it because at the back of my mind, I'd always wanted to host or have a business. So I left the university um, in the light of starting a business of my own. Obviously, this was going to be really, really difficult. At some point, I got a bit frustrated and I decided to go and look for a job just like every other person was doing. Because I realized my mates had all secured good jobs and were living, beginning to live the life of their dreams. In my pursuit for a job, it became really difficult as nobody will employ me because of my high grades. They felt that employing people with a first class was just a waste of company resources because all first class students will go over to go and do their masters and all the resources they had pushed into the individual would have gone to waste whilst the company don't benefit at all. So I decided not to let everything at steady go to waste, but rather start something small on my own, no matter how little that was. In my pursuit for starting something on my own, obviously I'd gone on to do a number of things, but then I met a couple of ladies along the line who would always come and do menial jobs for me at home, and then I would have to pay them. Then I had an idea of empowering women because these women were single mothers who seemed to be struggling. So they'll basically come to my house and help me do jobs and then I'll pay them. I decided to start from there because at that point, I'd also started doing a job for a big company back home in Ghana that was called Printex at the time. This was a textile company. Now, just to mention, I have a background in industrial art textiles. I'd majored in textiles, but I had done a few other things as well um, in my department. So I started working with these ladies. The idea was to groom them, empower them, and feature them in my magazine at that time called Insane Maglog. I started this project and surprisingly, it had caught fire because a lot of people had come on. And fast forward, I was able to empower over 400 women in Ghana, both literates and illiterates. Now, going forward, I had relocated after getting married to the UK. I had my son, and it seemed a bit boring because I'm the type who always would like to do something. So I had my son. Six months right after my son, I got pregnant again, and I was expecting my second son. Then, unfortunately, at my seventh month, I lost him. This was very, very difficult for me to deal with. But at the time I was in the baby and mother's group and I had sold the idea of starting a group for women, teaching them craft to health workers. And they had said that this was a solid idea and that I should think of putting things together. When I lost my son, I needed a place to go I needed friends to be around me because obviously I'd relocated from Ghana and my husband used to work away a lot as well. So it was basically myself, my first son, and I had to go through the grieving moment on my own. So I'd sold the idea to a few government workers and they had advised that I send a proposal to Nottingham City Council. I did that. 
but surprisingly just um, during that period I got pregnant again unknowingly and after I had sent my proposal I was waiting for a response which never came then I got to know that I was pregnant again with my daughter so I had slowed down on going after the proposal when I delivered my baby I realized I still needed to build a community around myself and the best way to do that was to start skilled hands so I had made a few calls to the city council um, going after the proposal and trying to see if anybody ever got it at all. But I remember speaking to somebody at the city council who said um, my proposal never came to them, but they liked the idea of skilled hands and that I should think of putting it together. So they had signposted me to somebody in the community called Van. Van works at Castle Cavendish Enterprise. No, Van works at Castle Cavendish Works. So I called Van and he had set up a meeting with me. We went into that meeting, myself and another director, and we had spoken to Van about the whole concept and what we wanted to do with the idea. So he said, put it together and let's take it from there. And that we have a little pot of money we think we'll be able to help you with to come up with a pilot for the project. So he did that. We came back into the community, spoke to a few people at the time, um, health workers. We had gone into a few women's group to talk to the women about the concept and if it's something they would like to attend, if it was set up. And all the women we spoke to were interested in it. We are spoken to women in different schools. We had done Nottingham School at the time and most of the women who had filled in a form had said they were interested in the program and they would like to be part of it if it was set up. So we did set it up. I think the first pilot, we had a few women attend. We also had a few women from ours at that time attend as well. And we had opened it up to what exactly what we wanted to do with skilled hands. I remember the first time we started our workshop, that was a jury making workshop. It had three people attend the workshop. And we knew that we still had to make more noise for people to know, or for the women in the community to know that the project has started. Then a couple of weeks after, the room was filled with 16 women. This happened at the Mary Porter Children's Center. So managers of the Children's Center really bought into the idea and wanted to support skilled hands. So they've given us the venue for the Children's Center for free and that the idea was when skilled hands was well established then we'll have to start paying for it but we had used the centers for three years continuous without paying a dime skilled hands continued to grow from there and we had opened up to Brockstow as well so we now had sites at Brockstow and mary porter children's center then covid hit so we had to think of a way of taking uh, workshops virtual so that we could still reach the women in their homes because at the time we all needed some form of relationship created virtually. And I think this was a blessing to not just the women, to myself as well, because I always looked forward to meeting the women, having some form of normalcy in our lives, doing crafts and chatting and having fun over the camera from the comfort of our homes. We had support from a lot of organizations. Um, we had financial support from Castle Cavendish Works, from Nottingham Together, from National Lotteries. We had the counselors grant as well. We did have some funding from Nottingham City Council. And I remember at some point, I received a call from development officer for Heising Green and she said the city council has seen the work you're doing and they really appreciate you and would like to give you a thousand pounds to continue the work you're doing for the community. This was really good news because then it gave us assurance that whatever we thought we were doing quietly was being acknowledged by the community and that we had the support of the community. We also had support from Greg's. I remember at the time Greg's will give us pastries 
anytime we met and all of us did look forward to eating Greg's whenever there was a workshop or there was a meeting. We also had support from Asda Heights in Green as well. I would give us some biscuits and some snacks every time we met. So those times were really some of the great moments for skilled hands as we continued our journey towards growth and expansion. At some point we had BBC Radio Nottingham reach out to us and they were interested in the job we were doing. So they had sent a representative to come and do a video of our workshops, speak to the women and do an interview of us. This really went down really well. After that interview, we were invited to the radio station um, to have an interview, I remember, with Alan at the time. Then Skilled Hands continued to grow. So we had gone virtual, done our workshops, and one would wonder how we were able to host virtual workshops. So what we had done at the time was to get materials and tools and get the women who were interested in doing the workshops meet at a local place where they would pick up their tools and materials, go away to their homes, and then log on uh, onto the, the Zoom link, and then we would have our workshops there. This kept going until, until COVID was lifted or until the ban on COVID was lifted. At the time, we had received a grant from the National Lottery Community at that time for three years, that grant was to help us continue the workshop. It was also to help us get a small office because we were growing and we had a lot of tools, craft tools and materials that needed to be stored away from my home. So we started looking for a place to have as a small office. And then fortunately we had Castle Cavendish Enterprise Center. So that was where we first have our first small office moved into it whilst things carried on. Just when we secured the small office, we had a call that um, the children's centers could no longer be giving to us for free and that we would have to start paying for it. But we didn't have a budget for that. So in our quest for a new training center, we realized that it would be brilliant to actually have a bigger office where we could partition and use part of it as a training center and the other bit as a office. So we had gone back to our funders at the time to see how we could do this with the grants we had at the time. And at this time, National Lotteries was our sole founder. They agreed that we get a bigger space to use as our training center. So we had moved all our training centers from the communities now to one place, which is Castle Cavendish Enterprise Center. We had operated at this place for quite some time. In that space, from the time Skilled Hands started till date, we've trained 310 women in Nottingham. Now, when we started, our target group were unemployed women women with caring responsibilities and those on low income um, living in Nottingham. The idea was to use our craft to help improve the lives of our women in the community because we believe that when women are empowered, everybody becomes successful and the community thrives as well since women are the binding cords for society. So we had gone on to develop our programs Currently, we have five workshops in dressmaking, bag making, soap making, joy making, and millinery. We had to think of ways to um, keep our workshops running. So we thought of opening up and trying to sell some of the products that the women did. So we currently have an online shop where we sell some of our products from. We also have a podcast channel or a media channel where we are hoping to grow for it to become a media generating channel for skilled hands as well. We have a YouTube channel as a craft channel where we upload constantly tutorial videos and we are steadily growing that as well to become an income generating channel for skilled hands. For the vision of keeping skilled hands growing even without grant support. We are thinking of doing other things like selling our workshops to women who do not meet our criteria to access our workshops for free, but still would like to access the workshops. 
And so these are some of the things we are doing to um, sort of bring revenue going forward into Scaled Hands to keep our workshops running as long as possible. We have also decided to get our workshop certified by an awarding body. So we are using NOCN. NOCN is National Open College Network, and they will be our awarding body just to give the women some form of valid certification as they pass through our doors at the end of their training. We are hoping to also be able to link some of our women with organizations where they can continue to further gain experience in working in the craft field. From time to time, we organize craft creative business workshops where these women can also um, further carry on the skills they've acquired to start a small business of their own. This year, next year, this year, we are hoping to have our third business workshop since Skilled Hands came into session. Then to talk about our ultimate event, which is the red carpet event. Now, this is an event that we do yearly and we are hoping to turn this into a, a fundraising event. Now, this is a three in one event where our women get to exhibit all the products they've done throughout the year in an exhibition. We also have a runway where the women in the dressmaking workshop will make garments to be modeled on the runway. Then we have the award bit where we celebrate our women, our volunteers and our interns for all the work they've done throughout the year, supporting this, the growth of skilled hands. Just to mention that we have good, a good relationship with Nottingham University. Nottingham Trent University and Nottingham College as well. We use most of their students as interns to help us grow in the areas where skilled hands cannot do things on its own. Joining skilled hands has actually allowed me to socialize and meet new friends and it has helped to make me feel empowered. Um, for the first time in six years, I've actually felt more than just a carer and I actually felt like a person again. It's given me the confidence and the knowledge to actually go out and start my own business and to create a better life for myself. I'm really thankful for the course that they have provided because they have given me so much hope for the future, for a better life. And it's given me something to actually look forward to for me and yeah i feel like a person again and i am so thankful to everyone involved you are amazing i found skilled hands a really lovely course to do with a great teacher met some lovely ladies and had a really good time it's a really valued course and i can recommend it to anyone wishing to um just find, wanting to learn a new skill. It's really great, thank you. Hi, this is Maureen. I would like to thank Skilled Hands Organization for giving me the opportunity to volunteer to help other women get the skills they may never have had otherwise and the courage to actually do a course in millinery which I did earlier this year. Thank you once again. Delighted to support the work that Skilled Hands do and the work that Sheila and her team do to make every woman that comes to every crafting class feel special. The confidence they bring and the joy that they bring has really allowed so many women in our city to discover their confidence, build their self-esteem and to enjoy being with others, especially after the pandemic and the lockdowns that we've had to experience. And I'm delighted that they've got this opportunity to build on that work and to support yet more women in our city. Review from Leslie Hall, Property and Facilities Manager at Castle Cavendish. After welcoming Sheila and Skilled Hands to Castle Cavendish Enterprise Centre in 2021, I have seen the organisation go from strength to strength over the years. 
I recall Sheila initially took tenancy of one of our smallest offices and over the years has progressed to renting two larger spaces, enabling her to run craft workshops for her service users on site. We are seeing increasing numbers of women attending the centre to participate in the dressmaking, soap making, bag making, millinery and jewellery crafting classes. Having attend attended one of the Skilled Hands red carpet events, I was blown away by the achievements of the participants and how they had developed as individuals, increased in confidence and enhanced their lives by working with Skilled Hands organisation. As a social impact company, Castle Cavendish's mission is to improve people's lives in Nottingham by supporting both voluntary and business sectors. We are therefore immensely proud that Sheila chose to base her organisation at our centre and wish her continued success. An anonymous review. I initially applied for the skilled hands courses for many different reasons. Having fled domestic abuse from a different town with my children, I felt lonely and unfamiliar in Nottingham. Skilled Hands organisation has helped me in more ways than one. It has not only become a safe space for me, but the course has had great positive impact on my mental health. It has helped me settle into and feel like part of a new environment. The jewellery making course especially has become a pleasant distraction to me. I can get my mind off my worries and have met and made some great and funny friends. I remember the first class I attended at the jewellery course. I was so impressed with how professional it all was. I was half expecting to be a basic level, similar to another jewellery course I had done before. I was pleasantly surprised to find it was nothing like that. I'm actually challenged in class and get to learn a new method or skill every session. The course has also given me hope for the future as I will be able to use the skills gained to work from home whilst prioritising looking after my children. I cannot commend our instructor Sheila enough. Not only has she created a wonderful organisation, she herself is one of the most lovely and praiseworthy ladies I have ever met. I'm so grateful to her and the Skilled Hands organisation for the wonderful opportunity she has created for us. They've brought some much needed joy to me in my time of hardship and are continuing to do so. Every week I eagerly await the following class and our next creation. Review from Zoe. I wanted to say how brilliant I have found the bag making course. I've learnt so much and feel after the sessions very confident in using a sewing machine. The video tutorials are a very good resource. The variety of techniques and tools has been so interesting and I know I can use so much of what I've learned moving forwards to continue making bags and purses. It's been lovely to meet some new people. Getting out to be part of a group learning new skills has been so rewarding. Thank you Skilled Hands for what you do. Review by Anonymous 2023 was a terrible year for me. I had been my mother's carer since 2012 and when she passed away I was absolutely devastated. I buried my mum in March and then to top it all my brother and nephew passed away in July. I buried my brother in August, I totally lost all my self esteem and I didn't want to see anyone. My social prescribing worker encouraged me to take up a hobby to help me through the days. It took a lot of courage for me to attend Skilled Hands. The first day I started the bag making classes, I felt really comfortable. The people are helpful, nice, and the tutor explains clearly. The tutorials are easy to follow, and for that reason, I also joined the dressmaking classes. Both classes have built up my confidence and self-esteem. I have learnt new skills and how to give my garments a professional look. I'm glad I attended Skilled Hands classes. Because prior to this, after my mother's death, I was in a very bad way. I am so grateful to Skilled Hands. I would recommend Skilled Hands to anyone. Review by Melissa. Skilled Hands has helped me build my self-confidence and has given me my passion back for doing something that I love and enjoy. Since beginning the jewellery class, I have made my own jewellery at home 
and even had a stall at my daughter's Christmas market where I was really popular as well. I can't thank Sheila and her positive attitude and encouragement enough. I made just short of £200 and my prices were as low as £2 for my Christmas earrings. Hi everyone, these are my first handmade earrings and handbag. I never think of making jewellery on my own, but the skill hands classes arose me a great deal of interest. The teachers is talent, patience, professional and the material provide with high quality. When I finished my course, I received a trophy unexpectedly. This is my first trophy in my life. You can't believe it. I'm sure that the course absolutely made my life more beautiful and meaningful. I look forward to attending the next one. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Amanda and this year I took part in a millinery course run by Skilled Hands Organisation. In this video you'll see a selection of hats that I made during the course by following the excellent step-by-step -step teaching of Sheila. It's really good for my mental health to focus on being creative. However, without the courses offered by Skilled Hands, I wouldn't have been able to afford to do a craft course. For me, I was excited to leave the house and spend time with like-minded ladies. The small group size gave me the confidence to chat and now I have made some new friends. During the course, we encouraged each other, helped each other and shared ideas to create some lovely hats. Each year, Skilled Hands also holds a fashion show at the end of the courses, which allows us course participants to show off and sell our creations, and not just our hats, but also dresses, bags and jewellery made in the other Skilled Hands courses. It's such a confidence boost. Skilled Hands craft courses are not the same as other craft courses. They are opportunities for those less fortunate women, like me, to unleash their hidden talents, grow in confidence, make friends and to join a community who can lift each other up and help each other. Please continue to support Skilled Hands Organisation CIC. <laughs>what the grant will do the grant will help us expand our workshops train an estimate of 126 women to 140 women in two years it will also help us employ four part-time staffs three craft facilitators and one administrative assistant we will be able to organize three events this year in addition to our regular workshops the next up and coming event will be the Creative Business Workshop. This workshop is to help women who would like to turn the skills they've learned from skilled hands into a small business. Then we have one in March, which is the International Women's Day celebration themed Pat on the Back. This is an event we put together to give women an opportunity to come together and do something they love aside the regular craft workshop. So if this event is open to all women in the community. They do not have to meet any criteria. They just have to attend, meet new people, share like activities and have fun. It's a time to give ourselves a pat on the back and treat ourselves to good, good food and some drinks. Then we have our ultimate event, which is the red carpet event. This is a three in one activity. It is a red, it is a fashion show, an exhibition and an award celebration for our women. A time to bring our families and the community together in a celebrative mood where we show them all the skills we've learned throughout the year, through garments on the runway and through our craft products done throughout the year. Expected results. Encourage community cohesion and integration. Reduce depression. Reduce stress. Boost confidence level, facilitate small business ventures, foster self-confidence and self-discovery. Offer women rescaling opportunities on earth hidden talents and potential. Provide employment and volunteering opportunities and build support networks.
We would like to say a massive thank you to everyone who has contributed to making Skill Dance what it is today. We wouldn't have been able to go on this journey without your support and your help. There are a few persons we would like to say a massive thank you to, and these persons are Van, Leslie and Jane from Castle Cavendish. Then we have Linda and Beth, who are both community development officers. We'd like to say a massive thank you to all our interns and volunteers who have contributed in their own special way to help bring Skilled Hands this far. Then to all the organizations who have supported in one way or the other to help fund these projects, we say a massive, massive thank you to the National Lottery Community, to the Nottingham City Council, to Near Neighbours, to Nottingham Together, NG7 Training, Grex, Asda Heising Green, to the Children's Centres and Management of Mary Porter and Broxtow Children's Centre. I would like to say a massive thank you to you all for how far you've come with us on this journey. Thank you. Thank you.